guys, my name is Lydia and welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to be doing a slightly different video which is five authors whose books I have loved and hated and if that's not clear in the title because I spent a long time on the wording trying to figure out what makes it clear it's authors who have written books I've absolutely loved that have been absolute favourites and also they've written books that I have hated or just not enjoyed. So I've got five books here by five different authors and these are some of my absolute favourites. These books or series were all five stars from me, absolutely loved them. So the first book that I have is To All The Boys I Loved Before series by Jenny Han. I loved this series, I flew through it I think maybe three years ago, absolutely devoured it. I loved Lara Jean, I loved all the characters and I thought it was just perfect it epitomized YA and it's just such a sweet series I there was so much to love about it and so this has a place up on my face shelf up here with a couple of candles that match it I've got the corner cafe and somewhere I've also got Lara Jean's letters absolutely love that series but Jenny Han also wrote The Summer I Turned Pretty which is one of the worst series I've ever read in my life it's abysmal the writing is <laughs> shambolic, the characters are atrocious, the storyline just doesn't make sense, it's awkward. I, I reread it after reading uh, To All The Boys I Loved Before just to see if it really was that bad. It was. It's my sister's favourite series, which, I mean she even admits that it's shite, but it's a comfort thing for her. I, I can't understand how one author has written such a terrible series and such an amazing series but I, I will still buy anything that she writes from now on because clearly she's grown as a writer but I I hate The Summer I Turned Pretty it's terrible. The next one this isn't such a stark contrast but this is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas this book is phenomenal I absolutely loved it I flew through it it's not the sort of thing I would usually pick up because it's fantasy um, but it was incredible and I couldn't put it down and I loved the characters. I loved Yadriel, I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, and also Julian. Just fantastic. The book is amazing, the cover's amazing. I have a signed book plate in this one. I couldn't fault this series. It, it kind of reminded me of Coco, the Disney film, just because that's pretty much the only other media that I've come across with sort of the Day of the Dead theme um, because I haven't read that much that's not because it's not out there and I, I absolutely adored this book and then I read Lost in the Neverwoods stunning cover absolutely beautiful cover one of my favorite covers ever I didn't like it I think I gave it a three in the end it might have been more like a 2.5 this just was not for me it was flat, it was dull, it just didn't have anything that really gripped me and it took me ages to read it and it's not a long book and it was such a disappointment which I think is part of the reason why it's on this list because it was one of the biggest disappointments because I'd built up Aidan Thomas so much after reading Cemetery Boys although it does, I guess it makes sense because he wrote this first he wrote this I think for his university dissertation or something and then wrote the Cemetery Boys which was what got published first. So it, I, must, I guess it makes sense that Lost in the Neverwoods isn't so good because it was written before, but it just was such a letdown. It just fell flat for me completely after the absolute magic that was The Cemetery Boys. I don't know why I keep calling it The Cemetery Boys, it's just Cemetery Boys. This has Pride of Place down here where it sits facing out because it's gorgeous. Number three is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Don Emily M. Danforth. This book blew me away. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's dark academia, it's historical, it's creepy, it's sapphic. It was just everything I wanted. Even though it's chunky, it's a huge book. It's like over 600 pages and I don't usually like anything that's over 400 but the summary of this just really stood out to me and I devoured it. It was absolutely stunning and I'm so glad I didn't read Emily M. Danforth's other book first 
because I never would have picked this up, I don't think, based on how much I hated the first one, which was The Miseducation of Cameron Post. I hated it. Absolutely hated it. I listened to it on audio and so many hours of my life wasted on that book. I hated the characters. Nothing seemed to happen and it was so long and it was just so dull. And yeah, it was sapphic, but that can't redeem a shit book. And I'm so glad that I read that after I read Plain Bad Heroines, because otherwise I never would have picked this up. And this is a stunning, incredible, like oh, this is one of my favorite books. I read it last year, I think in November, and it has stuck with me. I want to reread it already. And I'm not a rereader usually. So this next one, uh, if Ro watches this, she's going to be pissed at me, but it is Chornan Maguire. Middle game, absolutely loved. This is stunning. I adored this book. I came across it when I was in New York, very jet lagged after flying from California on a red eye and didn't have a hotel to go to yet because my booking didn't open until two and it was like six in the morning. So I took a train across town to go to Barnes and Noble and I picked this up and I started reading it in the cafe and oh my goodness, this book is incredible. I don't understand it. I don't fully know everything that happened. There was so much science and like physics and theoretical physics, but it blew me away. Absolutely phenomenal book. Again, quite a chunky one. I'm not sure how many pages this one is. It's just over just over 500 so again quite a thick book um and after reading this i thought well now i need to read everything that shauna mcguire has written i started with her is it the wayward children i can never remember the name of the series um the one with all the kids in the home and the portals i read like three of them no sorry i didn't like them I I kept giving them a go and I just couldn't get on with them. Nothing really made enough sense to me. There wasn't enough continuity of the story because every story follows a different character in a different world. And it just didn't have the same impact. So then um, last week I read Over the Woodward Wall, I think it was called, which is by, I mean, it's it's featured in this book. So in here, there's a fictional author called A. Deborah Baker who writes Over the Woodward Wall, which Sean Maguire then published under the pseudonym A. Deborah Baker. And I think I gave it three, but I think I was being generous. It's probably more of a two. It didn't make any sense. I didn't enjoy it. It was a really quick read because it was like 200 pages, if that. But I, I didn't like it. And I was so disappointed because I thought, oh, well, it's related to Middle Game, so I'm going to love it. No, I didn't. And Middle Game is so good and so mind-blowing and it keeps you on the edge of your seat and it made me cry, it made me shocked. And I don't usually have any sort of outward reaction to books when I'm reading. There's very much just a stone wall. Um, but this one really hit me hard. And then the, the rest just didn't. I will say that Shauna Maguire's books that she's written as Mira Grant are really good. I read Into the Drowning Deep on audio last year and that was stunning. That was sapphic. It had sort of mermaids in it. They're on a ship underwater. That was fantastic and I highly recommend it. But not the ones with the kids. So for this last one, I don't actually have a copy of the book that I love. I mean, I do have one somewhere. It's vanished. I've tidied my room. I've pretty much gutted it and I can't find it. And that is Sadie by Courtney Summers. So I'm going to use the project as a stand-in. Um, Sadie is absolutely incredible. It's one of the best books I've ever read. I think I first read it in 2018 on audio. And within a couple of months, I reread it on audio. I've also since reread it physically as well. Oh my gosh, I can't explain how much I love Sadie. It's such a gut-wrenching, heartbreaking story and the audio is fantastic because it's a full cast and I, every audiobook should be a full cast audiobook. 
it just absolutely blew me away. It shocked me the first time I listened to it because I was like, <laughs> what the hell? Um, amazing. I, if you like mysteries, if you like a deep, like family feeling, if you like a really determined, tenacious character who gets herself into shit because she's trying to do the right thing, you need to read Zadie. It's not a long book. I think the audio is about seven hours and the physical book is less than 300 pages, I think. This one's okay. I'm not a massive fan of the project, um, but the ones I hated, I, I thought, right, Sadie's phenomenal. The project was okay. I'm gonna try out Courtney Summer's back catalog. So I read Cracked Up To Be, horrible. Oh, hated that book, awful. The characters were horrible. The plot was, there was, I don't know if there even was really a plot just didn't make any sense I didn't get it I didn't like it so then I tried this is not a test which is like a zombie thriller sort of book nope didn't like that either that was boring a zombie book shouldn't be boring and it was so dull I just I was listening to the audio and I was like is it over yet major disappointments because it's, it's so hard when an author writes your absolute favourite book and then you pick up something else they've written and it sucks. I mean, obviously this is very subjective because some people will love the books that I've hated. I for sure know that Ro loves Shauna Maguire's Wayward Children series, if that's what it's called. I feel really bad that I can't remember what it's called now. Um, but they're just not for me and nothing I can do about it. So this has been my first time filming in my bedroom which is weird. Um, I've never <laughs> never had like filmable shelves before because I live in chaos and also I'm using a ring light so I'm trying not to do this and get ring light eyes. Um, I'm dreading editing this and realizing I've been staring at the ring light the whole time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it and having a bit of a rant and a rave about the good ones. Have you read any of the ones that I loved? Any of the ones I hated? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below and like and subscribe for more. Bye.